Hey everybody, welcome back to HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com and here on my YouTube channel and in this video I'm going to show you a quick little simple, um, I don't know if it's a trick, it's just a little tip um, on how you can take um, something like a drum loop like I have here on this top track and how you can cut it up and color code the different sections of the loop. A couple of my students have saw me do this in some training videos a while back and asked me, how do you do that? I don't understand how you do that. So I'm just going to show that to you really quick. I've been asked about it enough. I figure I'd make a video about it. But before we get to that, if you like what you see in this video, hit that subscribe button. Also go out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com. I want to give you a free mixing course worth 50 bucks. It's my gift to you just for visiting Home Recording Made Easy. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'm going to give you another free gift as well. So here we are in Studio One. So people have asked me, how do you chop this up and color code this and why would you do that well the reason why i do it and there's several ways you can accomplish the same thing is if i'm sitting let's say i'm recording a guitar scratch guitar part two let's say a drum loop or a drum track and i want to know where the different sections of the song changes there's a couple of ways you can you, you can do this you can do it in the arranger track you can add markers or i always just used to just chop it up in color code so let me show you uh how to do that so i'm just going to uh, delete this here for a second and I'm just going to bring a new loop in just to make it simple so I'm just going to take a loop oh that's not a big enough loop let's go to one here maybe get something a little bit larger here we go and I'm going to drop that in so it's all the color purple and if I play it back oops. Okay, pretty straightforward. So now, how do I cut it up into different sections and to color code it really easy? So I'm just gonna come up here and spread this out. And let's say you wanted to, you wanted to, let's say your intro went from here to about, you know, here. So I'm gonna use my blade tool, which is number three on my keyboard, or they call it the split tool, or it's up here in the toolbar. Again, number three on the keyboard is the shortcut. And let's say this is my intro from here to here, and I wanna cut it here. So I'm gonna make a little cut here. And let's say I want to um, change the color of the next part, which is the verse. And let's say the verse, first verse, comes from about here to here. So let's place a cut here. Now I'm going to hit number one on my keyboard to go back to my arrow tool. That's number one. Now I want to change the color of that. Well, how do you do it? Really simple. Just highlight the event, right click. See the color up here in the left-hand corner? If I left click on this color bar, here comes my color palette. See that? Real simple. Okay. If I want to make another cut, I use my number three again, go to my split tool, come over here, and let's say this, go back to number one, my arrow tool. Let's say this is my chorus, and I want to change the color of that. Right click, left click on the color bar, change that to purple. And that's how you do it. Really, really simple. So now you have kind of a visual aid on where the different sections of the song are. Obviously, you can use markers and such, and I'll show that to you now. A lot of people don't realize in version 5, they've kind of changed the location of where the markers are. It's up here with this little, uh, looks like this little menu here, this little menu area here. See where my cursor is? If you click on that, you're going to get a drop-down menu. And if you click marker, you're going to see the start and the end flag here. Let me get rid of this for a second here. Let me just delete those because I did that prior. So you, when, you do, when you bring down the marker, you're always going to get a start flag. And if we zoom out here somewhere you're going to get the end flag and that is all where that end flag is located is all in when you set up the song you can tell it how long the song is and it'll default so you can just left click the end flag and you can bring it anywhere in your session to bring it to the end of your your timeline or whatever but you can just left click and drag that okay so now if you want to add a marker to this let's say you can just in the marker track hit the little plus button up, oh, where's your playhead? We're gonna put it where our playhead is. So I hit the little plus button and let's say that's where we want our marker. We can drag this over here, left click, and you can double click in this and name it. If you wanna say verse one, you can do that. But sometimes that's a little difficult to read while you're playing. If you don't, you know, if you're not sitting close enough to the screen, it might be nicer to also have the different blocks of the audio event colorized. The other thing you can do is if you right click on this marker where I said verse one, you can, uh, choose this option, create an, uh, an, um, an arranger section for the markers. So when, when I do that, look what happens. It gives me my arranger track and then it shows me the markers here. See, start verse one, because I had a start marker and then I have a verse one. So that makes it a little easier. If you left click and highlight that and you want to change the color again, just right click on that and you see the little box. 
And now you can change that arranger color to whatever you want. So again, another way to maybe easily uh, visually see what's going on and when the different parts of the song are going to change. So you can use one or all three of these if you'd like. And then when you open, when you add markers, if you look over here on your left hand side in my um, inspector area here, the marker window, you'll see that we have a start flag. We have our verse one. If I come over here and go say, let's say do verse two, I can add a marker. And if I double click here, I can just say uh, verse two, let's say, and now you'll see over in the left hand pane, I have verse two. And once again, I can right click on that and hit create arranger section for markers. And you'll see that it actually puts up a separate section. So you can use the combination of all of these things. And if you right click and click again, you could change the color as well. And it also changes the colors over here in the inspector. Now, if you want to delete one of those markers, you can just come over here to the, you can highlight the flag. You can delete it here if you'd like, or you can highlight this arranger area. You can hit the delete key, or you can also come over here in the menu on the left-hand side and you can hit the delete keys as many times as you need to and start over. So that's a few different ways you can have a nice visual representation of where your song kind of changes sections if you're kind of the engineer and the player at the same time. I've always just used cutting up the blocks of audio. I know it may take a little longer. You may want to use one or one of the other methods I showed you, or you may want to use all three, but that's how you do it. So I hope you found this video helpful. Now, thank you for sticking around till the end of the video. So I said at the beginning of the video, I'm going to give you another free gift after you get your free mixing course at homerecordingmadeeasy.com. Check out the course if you like it and you dig my style of teaching and you really would like to try one of my other paid training courses, especially in Studio One. I have many courses that are specifically made for working in Studio One and shows you all the ins and outs of Studio One. I wanna give you a 25% discount on any training course on the website. If you use the coupon code YouTube25 at checkout, it will take 25% off. Check it out today. All the links will be in the description box below. Let me know what you thought of this tip or if you want to know about any other little cheat, little cheat sheet shortcuts in Studio One, I'd be glad to make a video for you. And until the next video, I've been Dave with HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com. I'll see you really soon. Take care, everybody.